It is time for oral questions. I recognize the Leader of His Majesty's loyal opposition. Good morning, uh, Speaker. My question is to the Premier. Every day we find out new details about who and how this government's insiders were involved in the Greenbelt grab. Public accounts revealed that this government paid the Premier's former Principal Secretary, Amin Masoudi, nearly a quarter of a million dollars to do the same job via his private company, Atlas Strategies. So my question to the Premier is, why did the Premier hire his good friend to provide the same services but at an exorbitant pay increase? I, the Government House Leader and Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. As you know, and the Premier uh, uh, highlighted uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, Mr. Masudi is no longer uh, uh, employed uh, by a PC caucus services. Supplementary question. Speaker, back to the Premier. Uh, we all remember Mr. Masudi for his participation in the infamous Las Vegas boys trip with Greenbelt land speculator Shakir Ramatula. Last week, journalists asked the Premier's office about Mr. Masudi's lucrative contract, and a spokesperson for the Premier said that the contract has ended and he has no formal role. What did, when exactly did the contract with Mr. Masudi's firm, Atlas Strategies, end? Minister of Mr. Affairs and Housing. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As, uh, as I mentioned, uh, the Premier highlighted uh, a couple of weeks ago in Niagara Falls that that contract uh, had ended and uh, Mr. Masudi is no longer uh, working for PC Caucus Services. And the final supplementary. Speaker, uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, back to the Premier. The, the people of this province deserve to know the exact date this contract ended. Because Mr. Masudi's firm was registered to lobby the government on November 3, 2022. If there was an overlap, it means that a company actively lobbying the government was also writing the Premier's speeches and drafting his communication strategy at the same time. At the very least, a close friend of the Premier got a pretty sweet gig. $230,000 for just three months of work. So back to the Premier, which is it? Mr. Municipal Affairs and Housing. Surprising that the member opposite is wrong, uh, Mr. Speaker, but again, as the Premier said, the, that contract uh, uh, was, uh, was terminated uh, a, couple of, uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, as highlighted by the, the Premier. Mr. Masudi himself, I'm told, uh, has never been registered to lobby uh, uh, the government. Uh, if she has a complaint, I would suggest that she take that up with the Integrity Commissioner, uh, and I'm sure that uh, he will uh, investigate that further. But as I said, he's no longer employed by PC Caucus Research Services. The next question. Once again, the Leader of the Opposition. Thank you, Speaker. Sometimes it's what they won't say. Uh, Speaker, back to the Premier. Government lawyers have now confirmed that the Premier routinely uses his personal devices to conduct government business. The Premier was warned by the Information and Privacy Commissioner that government business must be conducted on government devices and platforms. It's about basic transparency. This is not new. Why has the Premier refused to follow the Commissioner's guidance? Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing. Mr. Speaker, the, the, the Honourable Member will know that this Premier uh, has, uh, has been very open with respect to how people can contact him. As I said uh, last week, he in fact gave his phone number out in the House publicly for everybody to call. Now, I know I've been with him, and as a number of our caucus members have been with him, when he's answering calls from uh, constituents with respect to programs or services for people in his riding. He's not going to stop doing that because that's the type of person he is. The slogan for the people isn't just a slogan for us. It is at the core of what we do. Mr. Everything that we do since 2018 has been about advancing the people of the province of Ontario, unleashing the economy, and now we're going to tackle the housing affordability crisis that they helped create with the Liberals, Mr. Speaker. It's about doing what's right for the people of the province of Ontario. This Premier is not going to stop doing that. This caucus won't stop doing that. The Response. only people getting in the way is the opposition and their partners in the Liberal Party. Members, of please take their seats.
Start the clock. Supplementary. Speaker, if he's so open, why won't he release his records? Commissioners, uh, back Order. to the Premier, it's, uh, it's really important to remember that the Commissioner's guidance came after staff in this Premier's office were caught using personal email accounts to arrange for the Premier's souped-up custom van. Yeah. Speaker, the people of Ontario are not going to be played for fools. Order. Did the Premier intentionally continue to use personal devices in order to avoid freedom of information requests. Speaker, this is a party that can't even get a standing ovation right, right? And they expect the people of the province of Ontario to ever put confidence in them to govern. Like, give me a break, Mr. Speaker. I'll tell you what happened in the last election. We went to the people of the province of Ontario. We said that we we're going to continue to unleash the power of the economy of Ontario. You know why? Because it's not only good for the people of Ontario, it's good for all of Canada when Ontario succeeds. And that's why people from Alberta are here, because they want to see what we're doing, and it is good for all of Canada, Mr. Speaker. So I tell the member opposite, Order. take a look behind you. Order. There are so many fewer NDP members in that caucus. You know why? because the people of the province of Ontario put their faith in a progressive Conservative government to continue to build the economy, to tackle the housing affordability crisis, and to continue a bigger, better, older Ontario. Members will take their seats. The final supplementary. Speaker, Global News has requested the Premier's personal phone logs after an FOI request found no evidence the Premier had used his government phone during a one-week period in November. Remember, this was when the government was planning for the Greenbelt grab and various urban boundary expansions were being announced. The Auditor General and the Integrity Commissioner found that favoured land speculators received preferential treatment as a result of these decisions. So, to the Premier, will his personal phone logs reveal conversations with the very land speculators who benefited from preferential treatment by this government? Minister of Municipal Affairs and Health. You just can't, you, what can you do about a leader of the opposition who doesn't understand that we have a premier who actually takes calls from Ontarians? Imagine this, Mr. Speaker. He got up in the House and gave his personal phone number out in the House on the record for everybody to call. That's what he did. And that's probably why this caucus has grown. That's probably why we want a larger majority than we had in 2018. But you know what the real reason is? Because we continue to focus on the priorities of the people of the province of Ontario, Mr. Speaker. We said in 2018, colleagues, remember when we said that a carbon tax would hurt the province of Ontario's economy? Yes. What did they say? No. We said federal policies of, of high taxes, red Order. tape, and the carbon tax would hurt the Ontario economy. They said no, and they doubled down to support the federal Liberals. You know what we're going to do? We're going to fight it every step of the way. We're going to continue to cut taxes, continue to cut red tape, because we Response. don't accept we don't accept high interest rates that are the that are the what happens when you do all of the things that they want us to do. It takes too many people out of the economy, and we won't. The next question, the member for London North Centre. Good morning, Speaker. My question is to the Premier. Speaker. The details just don't add up on the former minister's trip to Vegas with a green belt speculator. The member for Mississauga East Cooksville, Mr. Masudi, and Mr. Tuesdell all suspiciously and consistently told the integrity commissioner that their trip was in 2019 when it actually occurred months later. The former minister said he only saw the developer in the lobby. Now it's reported that they got spa services at the same time. Would the Premier agree as a generally accepted practice that members of the Ontario Legislature shall present only honest and true information to the Te Integrity Commissioner? Mr. Mr. Affairs and Housing. Uh, obviously, Mr. Speaker, and that is up to that member to ensure that he does that with the Integrity Commissioner, and I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm certain that he will do just that, but that is a member that is no longer serving in this caucus. It is a member who's taken responsibility and resigned from Cabinet because the Premier expects only the highest standards from his Cabinet and caucus. At the same time, Mr. Speaker, we are focused on what matters to the people of the province of Ontario, and that is growing the economy. Look, there is no doubt 
There is no doubt that we made a public policy decision that was not supported by the people of the province of Ontario when we suggested we would open up the green belt to expedite housing. We accept that responsibility, Mr. Speaker, but what we will not accept is the opposition's continued obstruction on building new homes for the people of the province of Ontario. You know what? People want out of their parents' basement. They want to Response. have a home, a home for themselves so that they can build a bigger, better opportunities and futures for their families. We'll remain focused on that. We'll get the job done, Mr. Speaker. Supplementary question. Well, Speaker, on this side of the House, we will always vote for integrity. Doing the right thing is always the right thing to do. Back to the Premier. When we're elected to this legislature, we all take an oath. We pledge that we will all perform our duties honestly. Key members of the Premier's staff and a former cabinet minister all mistakenly misremembered the date of a luxurious trip to Vegas consistently, can't recall exactly how they paid for the trip, and don't mention the good luck massage. What's worse, their story was only corrected when the media reported evidence to the contrary. How can we trust this Premier to hold members accountable for violating the Members' Integrity Act when he himself won't follow the recommendations of officers of the legislature? Just the opposite, Mr. Speaker. Not only did we accept the 15 recommendations of the Auditor General, we are going even further by ensuring that the boundaries of uh, the Green Belt are codified in law, something that has never happened before, Mr. Speaker. Look, uh, he talks about integrity in government. Uh, look, we are building a bigger, better, stronger province of Ontario. But I wonder, when he says about the oath that they signed, I wonder if the, the former member from De Brampton would feel the same way. You remember Kevin Yard, right? You remember Kevin Yard? I wonder what the former member from York Southwestern might think about your integrity pledge over there, Mr. Speaker. I tell you what we're going to do. We're going to continue to focus on what matters for the Order. people of the province of Ontario, and that's building a bigger, better, stronger economy that brings everybody into that prosperity, Order. Mr. Speaker, because we know what? We want kids Response. out of their basements. We want them in a home of their own. We want them to help build a better Ontario for future generations. If that's not what our job is, then what else is it to do here, Mr. Speaker? The next question, the member for Mississauga, Aaron Mills. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is for the Minister of Economic Development, Job Creation and Trade. The previous Liberal government, with support from the NDP, watched on as life science companies in Ontario backed up their operations and went to innovate in other jurisdictions. Thankfully, our government took immediate action to fix this, and our province life science sector is now recognized as a global leader. However, in, in views of ongoing and emerging needs for life-saving medications and interventions. It is crucial that our government continue to prioritize investments in this critical sector. Speaker, can the minister please explain what our government is doing to support life science sectors? Minister of Economic Development, Job Creation and Trade. Speaker, Ontario is the largest life sciences jurisdiction in Canada. It's home to 19,000 firms and 70,000 workers. In just three years, we have attracted $3 billion in new investments in the life sciences sector. <clears throat> That is why our government launched a new life sciences strategy. This is the very first strategy in over a decade, and that will help us grow the number of jobs in the life sciences sector to 85,000 by 2030. And it includes $15 million in a life sciences innovation fund, which will help entrepreneurs take their in innovative ideas to market. And it includes a life sciences council Spons. that we're working with right now to find opportunities to increase our company's competitiveness and encourage the adoption of Ontario-made innovation. The supplementary question. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank you the, uh, to the minister for his response. It is great to hear that we have been able to attract over $3 billion in life science investments in the past few years. Every year, we have over 65,000 students graduating from STEM programs 
at our globally recognized universities and colleges, who is one of the most sought-after workspace workforce in the world. It is no surprise that glo global life science companies are investing and expanding in Ontario. Speaker, can the minister please elaborate on some of the investments our government has been able to secure in the life science sector? Mr. Economic Development. Think about this for a minute. Ontario is home to critical medical breakthroughs, including the discovery of insulin, developing the very first cardiac pacemaker, and detecting the cystic fibrosis gene. That's what we've done here in Ontario, and it's why life sciences ecosystem is so noticed around the world. We've attracted game-changing investments like Moderna's multi-million dollar partnership with Novacol Pharma to expand vaccine manufacturing right here in Ontario. This is in addition to the $500 million investment from AstraZeneca earlier this year, which is creating 500 highly skilled jobs and boosting the capacity, capacity to develop innovative medicines. Speaker, these investments are a vote of confidence in Ontario's thriving sector. Thank you very much. The next question, the member for Ottawa Centre. Thank you, Speaker. My question is to the Premier. Six years ago, the Scottish people found out Phil Verster, then CEO of Scott Rail, was receiving a salary of $430,000, a $28,000 rent supplement, a $16,000 car allowance, and full private health care for himself and his family. Mr. Verster got these perks, Speaker, besides months of delays, malfunctions, and fair hikes in Scotland's rail system. He resigned in disgrace in 2017, but the Liberals then hired him to run Metrolinx in 2017, and he has failed to deliver transit on budget and on time ever since. But, Speaker, the government just renewed Mr. Verster's contract. Oh, no. Reports are suggesting he could earn up to a million dollars a year with God knows how many perks. My question to the Premier, why are you rewarding failure? Right. The Associate Minister. Mr. Speaker, our government is investing $70.5 billion in the next 10 years yeah. to invest in the largest transit expansion in the history of Canada. Mr. Speaker, we have multi-billion dollar projects like Go Rail Expansion Program, Four Priority Subway Program. Mr. Speaker, since 2018, the scope of Metro Lynx has significantly expanded. Either we are focusing on building Ontario Line or shoveling the ground for Scarborough Subway after 30 years of inaction from the former Liberal government supported by NDP, we are getting shovel in the ground, Mr. Speaker, under the leadership of Premier Ford. We are investing across Order. Canada. So we are investing the largest investment across Ontario. Mr. Speaker, we are making Spons. life more affordable. Thank you. Members will please take their seats. We start the clock. Supplementary question. Thank you, Speaker. To be clear, the government, back to the Premier, is rewarding an executive that failed the country of Scotland and that is failing the province of Ontario. We remember how these Conservative Speaker in 2017 and 2018 railed against Mayo Schmidt, the $6 million man who helped the Liberal government sell off Hydro One. But now they are the conductor, sadly, of Phil Verster's gravy train at Metrolinx. Commuters are suffering. Transit workers are suffering. Hundreds of small businesses have had to close because of Mr. Verster's failure, but his army of 59 vice presidents at Metrolinx and 19 C-suite executives Whoa. continues to rake in perks and massive paychecks. So, Speaker, a simple question to the government, to the Premier. Will he stand up for transit riders, transit workers, demand accountability at Metrolinx, and fire Phil Verster today? The end of the Associate Minister of Transportation. Mr. Speaker, our government will not take lessons from the member opposite who just want to see Ontarians stuck in gridlock forever. 
Forever. Mr. Yeah. Speaker, NDP claims to want more public transit, but in record, they have voted against every single measure our government has put forward to make that happen. Mr. Speaker, Order. whether it's subway, Scarborough subway, or entire line, even right now, Mr. Speaker, our government is making life more affordable for transit riders from Durham region, York region, yeah. Mr. Brandon, for coming to Toronto. We are making. This, we are discounting the double fare. So moving forward for City of Toronto, for TTC riders, Mr. Speaker, no more two fares or three fares. We are making one fare that will save $1,600 every year. And Mr. Speaker, NDP wants two arms against that. We are making life more affordable. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The House will come to order. Individually, they don't come to order. Order. The government house leader will come to order. Member for Kitchener Conestoga will come to order. Start the clock. Next question, the member for Peterborough Court. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm not sure how I can follow up that answer. My question is for the Minister of Indigenous Affairs and the Minister of Northern Development. Oh, great minister. The previous Liberal government, propped up by the NDP, drove jobs out of Ontario and failed to unlock our province's full economic potential. That's right. In contrast to the failed leadership of the previous Liberal government, we must no recognize answer. and respect that Indigenous businesses are valuable in supporting critical supply chains across many sectors. Our government must appreciate their unique perspectives and contributions in the business sector, which are essential in building a stronger Ontario. While our government has implemented positive measures to ensure that all Ontarians have the opportunity to participate in our growing economy, more needs to be done to support Indigenous communities. Speaker, can the minister please explain how our government is increasing economic Question. prosperity for Indigenous people across Ontario. Mr. Indigenous Affairs. Mr. Speaker, I thank the member for his question. This is about engaging First Nations leadership and First Nations business leaders in their own forums, Mr. Speaker, talking about opportunities in legacy infrastructure projects, major energy uh, corridor projects, Mr. Speaker. Not less than a couple of weeks ago, we, we talked uh, with a number of chiefs about some exciting uh, hydroelectricity projects that won't just supply their communities, Mr. Speaker, but will also host anchor tenants in uh, the resource sector. In southwestern Ontario, we've established uh, table-specific, project-specific opportunities where First Nations business leaders, uh, Mr. Speaker, and uh, business leaders have an opportunity to get in the same room and talk about real opportunities and take action. We are a participant at those tables, Response. Mr. Speaker, and we're seeing real progress being made with Ontario's First Nations economic development uh, businesses. Thank you. The supplementary question. Thank you, Speaker. And from the Minister's response, it's evident that the Indigenous Economic Development Fund is leading to positive outcomes for Indigenous communities and is helping to advance economic prosperity for Ontario That's right. as a whole. However, businesses are only one part of what makes up a vibrant economy. Prosperity is also amplified through relationships and investments that expand cultural and recreational opportunities uh -huh. that not only benefit communities in the North, but also include people all across Ontario. 
Our government must continue to partner with Indigenous communities on initiatives that will lead to long-term economic growth. Speaker, can the minister please explain how our government is supporting Indigenous communities in ways that will strengthen their economic prosperity? That's right. Indigenous Minister of Indigenous Affairs. Mr. Speaker, in increasingly we're seeing First Nations communities consolidating their resources when it comes to business activities, partnering with other First Nations communities, and tapping into business expertise. Take, for example, uh, the Ontario First Nations Economic Development Agency. Now, this ministry uh, supports them wholeheartedly. We promote economic development officers in communities throughout Ontario. We provide business capacity. We support recruitment and retention of qualified business people to support First Nations communities and or their businesses in their efforts. And we work with them very closely, Mr. Speaker, on improving First Nations procurement, not just in the private sector, Mr. Speaker, but also in the public sector. These are all examples, Mr. Speaker, of communities that are moving forward on key business projects that support Response. their community and the surrounding area for a greater, more fulsome sense of prosperity, Mr. Speaker, that includes First Nations people, their communities, Mr. Speaker, and their businesses. Thank you. Thank you. The next question, the member for Niagara Centre. Thank you, Speaker. Through you to the Premier. The Premier has constantly claimed that there is no government spending on the Greenbelt scandal. Yet just two days after the Auditor General released a damning report about the Greenbelt grab, this government started flooding the airways with an ad campaign attempting to salvage their image. So, first this government takes Greenbelt lands to enrich their friends, next they take tax dollars to try to change the channel. Will the Premier tell us how much this vanity project is costing the people of Ontario? Mr. Municipal Affairs and Housing. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. In fact, what we're doing is highlighting for the people of the province of Ontario that this government is focused on their priorities. Now, housing is a priority not just for progressive conservative voters, but it's a priority for all Ontarians. Regardless of what side of the house you come on, you should be focused on that.